Hello, I'm Clint with Brace Tool, and today I'm going to do an assembly and demonstration video for our three-inch wire line um, We'll start with the body. Lay it down on the bench. We'll take our nut, put it onto our bottom union. Assembled some of the repetitive parts as well. <clears throat> okay. Once those are installed, you should torque those to spec. Uh, all torque specs are available on our tech sheets. And when they're torqued to spec, then there are set screws on the back and the front of the wireline valve body on the top and the bottom, which can be torqued in to prevent those from backing out should uh, anything get turned on the wellhead. And now I'll start assembling uh, all my parts for the uh, ram blocks and everything here. We'll take our uh, piston housing. Piston housing holds the V-packing and some seals and uh, keeps everything sealed from the outside. I've already installed the seals, but I'll show you what they look like. Uh, there's a female backup ring, two pieces of V-packing, and then a male backup ring which has an external and an internal ring. Those all fit inside there and are held in by a snap ring. First thing we'll install is the anti-rotation pin. That uh, stops the ram block from being able, able to rotate inside the wireline body, the wireline valve body, sorry. <clears throat> that gets put in and torqued just slightly, it doesn't need to be over torqued, it's, uh, it will not come off inside there. Then we'll install our lockout pin. Lockout pin comes with a bushing. Bushing is designed to rotate on the shaft and in between the ram block, uh, eliminate wear and friction. That'll thread in and we'll thread that in just so that the top of the shaft is flush below the threads on the piston housing. Now I'll install my retainer nut and this is just for an assembly purpose right at the moment uh, because when we install our um, ram block uh, we'll have to turn this with some left hand torque. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'll install the outer seal into the ram block. It can only go in one way. It's got little tabs that face upwards and it slides into the ram block. Squeeze it in, make sure it's nice and flush so it'll assemble easily. Our line guide line guide will be uh, matched to whatever size line your wire line valve should be used with. Uh, this one is for slick line. There's two cap head screws that uh, hold those on. Install the ram block onto the piston housing. So we slide the lockout pin in and align the anti rotation pin with the hole in the ram block. And this is where this nut comes in handy because then you turn this to the left and line the holes, hole up with the anti rotation pin. 
remove the nut. Oops. And we can use the wrench on the flaps of the lockout pin now. I like to thread this in all the way so that the ram block is um, touching against the piston housing. That way it's kind of all solid and easier to manage. I want to torque it just to it so it's flush. Then we'll install our alignment pin. It's a small alignment pin. Uh, lines up with this hole in your piston housing and onto your wireline valve body. This ensures that everything is aligned correctly inside the wireline valve body. It doesn't need to be over torqued, it's got a slot head in it, so if you over torque it, you can flare it out and you don't want to do that. Then we'll take our inner seal and install the key. The key has two little tabs on it that align with the slots in the uh, inner seal. And on the round block, there's a slot that that key aligns with. That slides in there. Then we'll take our assembly. Slide it into the body, push it in, and align the alignment pin. You can see that's nice and flush and tight there. Then we can install our nut. This retainer nut holds your piston housing on the in the uh, wireline valve body. Then we'll install our spiral lock ring. The spiral lock ring uh, locks your nut onto the body so that it uh, can't be backed off. There. And we can install the handle into the wireline valve. Using the same nut that we removed. At this point, we will turn the body around and we'll install the other side, which I have already pre-assembled. Alignment pin and the hole are all aligned. Fits the other nice and snug. Install the other retainer nut. And our second half. Okay, at this point we can assemble our equalizing assembly. The equalizing assembly consists of a valve. It's got a hex head in it and a body. The body's threaded and the valve with O-ring seals on it, and there's a metal to metal seat on the very tip of the valve as well. So it goes in, doesn't need to be super torqued in, just bottom it out. The seals will take care of the rest. Then we'll install the retainer screw. And the retainer screw is there to hold the equalizing valve from backing out of the thread too far, so it just covers the very edge of the thread and the valve that will back out against it and not allow you to come out any farther than that. That gets installed into the body and the 
bottom corner. Tighten up and torqued into spec, which as I said before is all available on our tech sheets. Uh, these two adapter plugs are thread into the body and they cross over to half inch NPT boxes. Uh, the pipe plug can be removed from those and replaced with a needle valve or a pressure gauge, equalizing hoses many different applications for those. Those also both would get torqued into spec. Whatever the valve is now assembled, at this point we want to function test it and make sure everything goes together smoothly. And you want to close your arms evenly so that when everything is uh, done up and closed, your RAM blocks line up in the center of your BOP body, or your wireline belt body. And they're together. I always look inside to make sure everything's lined up, no air space in there. And after you've serviced your wireline valve every time, they should be re-pressure tested. And uh, make sure you have no leaks or anything and regular maintenance is crucial. Thank you.